With gold hitting a fresh three-month high, do investors still have time to jump on the gold bandwagon or have they missed their chance? Our next guest is no stranger to the market. RBC Capital Markets' George Giro joins us now on the line. George, good to have you back on the show. Well, thank you very much. It's exciting. Now, the question is, is this really different this time, or is this sort of like uh, a bounce that may not last? And this, that's what people have been asking me all day. And, that's and there are some interesting right. things going on with gold up 7% this month. Well, that's what I want to ask you, George. Uh, do you think investors should give in to the hype here? I don't think it's a question of hype. I think it's a question of opportunity, a buying opportunity that arose uh, near the end of the year when gold was being sold for tax reasons and other reasons. And then, of course, last year and the year before, no one really needed gold, and it was off everybody's radar. Right. Well, we also see uh, mixed U.S. data Wednesday and comments from New York Fed President Dudley that conditions are tightening. Uh, when do you expect the Fed to make its move on rates? As we know, this plays a, a really key role in, in how gold moves. Well, I'm only looking at how the futures markets work. And according to what I see in the futures markets, I see a 20% chance for March, but I see a much greater chance for June. So probably June will be the first time due to the fact that we have had major volatility in January and we've had other important sell-offs in crude oil, which were anti-inflationary, that I think probably could have delayed the Fed's uh, schedule for four hikes this year and maybe even lowered it to two hikes instead of four. So how does that play out for gold? What does that mean for the metal, George? Well, continuing low interest rates with the 10-year today hitting actual year lows, very interesting that we're below 2%. We're at 1.87% for 10-year treasuries. All of that means low interest rates, um, the fairly low crude price, which is also long-term inflationary, and today's jobs numbers, uh, ADP came in at 205,000, actually 15,000 better than expected. All of that means that we're starting to improve in the U.S. Well, speaking of jobs, we have Friday's non-farm payrolls uh, number coming out. What, what's your sentiment on it? What can we, what can we expect here? Well, I, I don't like to take um, pot shots at a number, but I will say this, that no matter what the number is, I think the Fed pretty well has signaled, uh, Esther George talked about it this week, Dudley talked about it this week, there'll be another um, Fed speaker here and there, because there is no Fed meeting this month, um, that probably they're at least going to have two hikes this year. And then there's a lot more going on for gold. Um, China, of course, last quarter bought 19 tons of gold. The GLD, the large ETF in gold, attracted $950 million, uh, according to Adam Brown from the SSGA. Um, and then, of course, you have the lunar holiday, the Chinese New Year, starting this next week. Right. All of that normally is very helpful for gold, and I think the, all this volatility with people looking for havens, especially from countries that have had currency fluctuations and major problems, whether it's Argentina, uh, Brazil, uh, earlier it was, uh, of course, in Europe and Greece, um, it's, it, and then, of course, Far East uh, problems. If, if you put everything together, there's enough meat for the investor to look at gold, but because of all the volatility in other commodities and all the volatility in the stock market, no one really kept it on the radar, so that, which, right. which, which is borne out by the fact that January 8th, the first week ending, we had 424,000 open interest in uh, gold 
futures contracts, which is a sum total of longs and shorts. And as of today, we only have 380,000. So it means the funds we're fleeing have kept it off the radar, and gold is under-owned and under-invested by the funds. So that said, and with the time we have left, what's a specific forecast you have for gold? Is another leg up here? Do we stay in this range? What will happen? Oh, I think by the end of the year, I'm hoping to see, or at least I, I'm prepared to see, twelve to thirteen hundred, um, uh, which, which is of course somewhat higher. But I don't think we're going to see the funds jumping in and the and the fund managers adding to positions until we start to stabilize at over twelve hundred. Now the option open interest in gold is one million one hundred and sixty two thousand. And that has really moved back up. So we're seeing a lot of interest in the options in gold, but we're not seeing that much in the futures yet, but I think we will. George, thanks so much for your thoughts today. Thank you for having me. I really am wishing everybody a good year. Thanks, George. And thank you for watching this edition of Kitco's Gold Report. We'll see you tomorrow.